Okay, so in this video, we want to introduce the concept of geometric series. Geometric series form a special class of infinite series, and here's your general generic geometric series. We are summing from n going from 0 to infinity, and we'll see later on that we can change the start of our summation, but for now, to simplify the um, discussion, we'll start with 0. And all we're summing is powers of a fixed number. So r to the n, where r is fixed. So r to the 0 is 1, plus when n is 1, r, plus when n is 2, r squared, plus when n is 3, r cubed, and so forth. So we're summing consecutive powers of r, where again r is a fixed real number. Now what we want is twofold. We want to figure out for which values of r will 1, the series converge, and we'll also try to figure out when the series does converge, what value does it converge to? And we'll be able to answer in this video those two answers. So we'll figure out when the series converges, and when the series does converge, we will be able to evaluate it, obtain the exact value of the infinite sum. But to do this, we will have to look at the series rigorously, therefore, as a limit of the partial sums. So we won't go from 0 to infinity right away. We will first take a partial sum, so we'll sum from 0 up to a fixed point, and then we will let the number of terms that we're summing become larger and larger and larger, therefore approach positive infinity. This is again the sum of the terms up to r to the uppercase n, so we will give this a short hand name, we'll call this s sub m, sub n, sorry. One quick comment, and this is the comment when r is 0. If you plug in here r equals 0, you have an inconsistency, because you would have 0 to the 0, which is undefined, but we take this to be 1 always. So this is just a concise way of writing this out, but when we write the sum from 0 to infinity of r to the n, we really mean 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. So if r is 0, well, we're going to have 1 plus 0, so it's just 1. Second comment, what if r is 1? Well, if r is 1, the series is trivial, right? If we are summing from 0 to infinity, 1 to the n, well 1 to any power is always 1, so this will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 forever. If you add 1 an infinite number of times, clearly the result is infinite. So the geometric series when r is 1 clearly diverges. And why am I looking at the special case first? Because to figure out a way to evaluate this infinite sum, we will need to assume that r is not equal to 1. But when r is 1, the result is trivial, the sum clearly blows up to positive infinity. Let's now look at Sn, the partial sum up to r to the uppercase n, and try and find a way to simplify it. So let's expand the sum. So 1 plus r plus r squared up to r to the uppercase nth power. And now the clever idea, and this really is a moment of inspiration, is we'll look at what if we multiply Sn by r? Then we get r times 1 is r, plus r times r is r squared, plus r times r squared is r cubed, up to well, before r to the n, it's r to the n minus 1, times r will give us r to the n, plus, finally, r times r to the n is r to the n plus 1. What's interesting here is that almost all the terms from both expressions are the same. So the idea is, well, what if we subtract these two from each other, almost everything will cancel, and we'll have a very simple expression. 
So we will do Sn minus R Sn. So if we do this minus this, then all of these cancel with all of these, and we're left with simply 1 minus R to the N plus 1. And so the sum completely disappears. And now we can isolate for Sn. Factor Sn on the left here, so you'll have Sn times 1 minus R is equal to 1 minus R to the N plus 1. And you see now it's crucial that r is not 1, because we want to isolate for Sn. We want to divide by 1 minus r. But we already know that the series diverges when r equals 1. So case closed there. So we can assume here that r is not 1. And then Sn is quite simply 1 minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r. And why is this fantastic? Well, think back, Sn was the sum of n plus 1 terms. From r to the 1 up to n, that's n terms, plus 1, n plus 1 terms. So Sn is complicated. It's actually a sum of n plus 1 terms. So as n gets bigger and bigger, the expression here gets more and more complicated as we're adding more and more terms. But now we have just proved that this sum equals this expression. What's great here is that no matter how large n is, we're not adding more and more terms. The expression does not become more and more complicated. It will always be for any n, 1 minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r. And that's it. So now we can go back and use this to evaluate our infinite geometric series, replacing the direct form of Sn as the sum from 1 to r to the n by its simplified form. So the infinite geometric series, if we write this out, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so forth, as we have said is the limit of the finite sum, so of 1 plus r plus r squared up to r to the n, and as we let n tend to infinity, then we're going to be adding all the terms of our infinite geometric series, but as we have just said, this partial sum is exactly what we called Sn. And now we can replace this more complicated expression by the much simpler expression. And now think of why this is familiar. This is now, if you just look at r to the n plus 1, this is a geometric sequence. As n goes to infinity, we are taking larger and larger and larger powers of a fixed number. And so we're asking, well, when will this limit exist? Well, if you think of it, if the number is larger than 1 in size, as you take larger and larger powers, the number becomes larger and larger, so the limit of this expression will not exist. On the other hand, if the number r is less than 1 in absolute value, then larger and larger powers of r will become smaller and smaller and smaller, and the limit this will shrink to zero. So this limit only exists, omitting the case, again, when r equals 1, as we know the, the geometric series diverges in this case. So if we reject r equals 1, then this limit will only exist if in absolute value r is strictly less than 1. And now we are taking larger and larger powers of a number that is smaller than 1 in size, so this number will shrink to 0. Imagine r being 1 over 10. So you would have 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over 10,000, and so forth. So if in absolute value r is 
strictly less than 1, this shrinks to 0, and now we get that the infinite geometric series, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the 4 and so forth, is quite simply 1 over 1 minus r. So just a beautiful conclusion. And the series only converges if r is strictly less than 1 in absolute value. So now let's state our conclusion and then we'll give a slightly more general formula. If we begin summing at a later point, we could start summing at 1 or at 5 or at 7. And then we'll see what happens. And it's almost the same but with a slight twist. So now we have our conclusion when the series begins at 0. So we have the infinite geometric series r to the n 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so forth. And this series only converges if an absolute value r is less than 1. And if that's the case, the series converges to the exact value of 1 over 1 minus r. And of course you can uh, look at this in the form of r being strictly between negative 1 and 1. This is equivalent. And the series diverges for any other value of r. So if, well what's the opposite of this, if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. So just a beautiful conclusion. The infinite series converges to 1 over 1 minus r if an absolute value r is strictly less than 1. The series diverges if the absolute value of r is larger than or equal to 1. And one last remark, what if we start summing at an arbitrary point? How will this change? Again, looking at a convergent geometric series, how will this change the formula? And you'll see the change is very minor. Sorry, I want to begin at a different point than 0. Suppose I begin at uppercase M. So let's write out the first few terms and you'll see exactly how we can, in one e simple step, retrieve this geometric series. So we have R to the M plus R to the M plus 1 plus R to the M plus 2 plus dot dot dot. We can easily factor an r to the uppercase m from every term of our series. And if we do so, we're left with what? Well, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so forth. And you see this is exactly our initial geometric series. So if r is less than 1 in absolute value, this geometric series adds up to 1 over 1 minus r. So we're left with r to the m times 1, which is r to the m, over 1 minus r. And we can even make this simpler. If you look at it, what is r to the m? Well, it's nothing but the first term of the series. So you can simply write this as well, the first term of the series over 1 minus r. The great thing about this is that this is valid in both cases. So when you're summing r to the n, 
beginning at 0, well the first term is 1, so you have the first term, 1 over 1 minus r. If you begin at uppercase m, the first term is r to the m over 1 minus r. So from now on, when you have a converging geometric series, all you have to do is look at the first term over 1 minus r, and this is the exact value of the given infinite geometric series. And that's it.